What's up, YouTube? Um, usually I don't do this. I'm not too fond of this mug right here, but um, I've been um, kind of having this on my mind for a minute to uh, do a video on my testimony. Uh, it's, a, it's real crazy. Uh, it's a crazy, it's almost unbelievable. Um, some things that happened to me when I was a kid, almost 17 years ago now. Uh, I think I was 15, 15 years old. Um, and, uh, as a kid, I always suffered with, uh, asthma and uh stuff like that and just being sick all the time um uh, with this day in particular uh it was the day after christmas um i had been sick you know and i hadn't really been feeling good and i was at my cousin's house and um you know they had bought a brand new trampoline and, uh, you know, everybody's outside playing, having fun, doing what kids do, you know. So they they called me out there. They was like, come on, let's, you know, let's go out here, play on the trampoline, do this, do that. Uh, and I was sick. I shouldn't have been out there. It was cold, and I had a cold already. Uh, but it was a lot. It's, it, it was a lot more going on with me, you know. Uh, during that time too spiritually uh, so I went out and I'll get into the spiritual things uh, later went out I jumped on the trampoline you know I was uh was I the first couple times I jumped up and I came down and you know this one time when I came down it felt like somebody laid a bag of bricks on my chest and um at that that moment i didn't know but my lungs had collapsed and i, I couldn't breathe at all um so i rushed i tried to get back in the house i got back in the house and i was telling everybody telling somebody call the ambulance because you know me being sick throughout my kid my childhood i had never felt uh, that way with an asthma attack. I knew something was different. So, um, I was telling my brother, you know, to call the ambulance. You know, I just kept saying it. <clears throat> I didn't think to pray. I didn't think of none of that stuff. Um, all I wanted to do was breathe. And, um, I remember telling my brother, you know, it had got so bad. I remember, I remember telling him, I was like, man, um, I don't think I'm going to make it. And that was before the ambulance and everything got there. So, you know, he was saying, don't say that, man. Don't say that. Don't say that. And by the time, um, I don't know. I don't know how I got in the ambulance. I could barely breathe. I mean, it was like nothing. And um, I blanked out. Um blanked out so this is where the testimony kind of begins you know a lot of people I've noticed in the world now they say you know God isn't real nobody believes in Jesus or anything about the Bible you know there's so many different things out there that's trying to discredit the Bible discredit the word of God um, and I barely knew anything about the Bible. You know, I went to church. Um, I had been going to church since I was a kid, since I was about six, seven years old. And, um, I knew, you know, you know, you hear people say, oh, ask God to forgive you and he'll do this and he'll do that. Um, uh, I didn't know about salvation really like that. I, you know, I went to churches that said, if you spoke in tongues, 
you know, you're saved. If you jump around and shout everywhere, that meant you were saved. Um, I, that's, that's, that's what I thought saved was. If you jumped around and shouted and spoke in this other language, you know, that you were saved. Um, I didn't, that was my extent to knowing what the church, you know, and salvation and all that stuff was about. I didn't really know the Bible like that. I knew regular John 3.16. That's probably about it. You know, um, really didn't have, I would say I had a relationship with God. I prayed as a kid a lot. I prayed for forgiveness a lot because I knew, you know, as a kid, I, I was doing a little crazy stuff too. Um, I got in my trouble. You know, I did stuff I, I shouldn't have been doing. I smoked. I was drinking at a young age, at 12, 13, you know, kissing girls and playing house and all that crazy stuff. And I knew it was bad. I felt it in my in my spirit. You know, God, even back then, the Holy Spirit was con con condemning that stuff that I was doing. And I didn't, you know, I figured, shoot, if I just ask for forgiveness, I'm good. But that's that's the wrong way to use the grace of God. Uh, and I didn't know that. That's a totally wrong way to use the grace of God. I used to do bad stuff and be like, oh, I ain't got to do nothing but ask for forgiveness. You know, I he'll, he'll forgive me, you know, even though you know in your heart, that, you know, you're doing super, you know, you shouldn't be doing the stuff that you're doing. Yeah, I thank God today for, for those times, for forgiving that ignorance. Um, but I'm going to get back into what happened. So I blanked out uh, and woke up, woke up 38 days later from a coma uh, from the doctors telling me that I died and they had to resuscitate me and I was in a coma and all this stuff. Now, while I was in that state, I saw heaven, I saw hell. I experienced both of them. Hell was like this holding cell type of place. It was no cell. I mean, it was just a desolate place. And I was by myself. And it was like this. If you ever seen a dreary, real dreary day, real just dreary day it looked sort of like that and i would say i wasn't aware of a body i didn't have a body only way i can describe it is my face was in the ground and my eyes was the only thing i could see out i couldn't speak i couldn't do anything um but i could see around me and what i saw it just was like I would describe it as um, piles of feces, like as far as you can see, just a nasty, nasty place. Um, and I've looked at a couple of other people talk about their experiences uh, with, you know, near death experiences and experiencing hell and this and that. And they always talk about a smell and, you know, uh, stench and all this stuff. Um but that's what I saw. It was like this. And it felt like it you you know you're you you know when you're in eternity. You don't feel time. Um I could tell you that you know it's eternal. I had no recollection of anything. All I did, all I could do was look out into this desolate place and just nasty filth. And um, I can't tell you how long. It felt like forever that I was in this place. Felt like forever. That's why I know eternity is forever. So, and I was on, you know, I was in the coma for 38 days. So whatever little time that I died and seen that, it felt like an eternity. Um. But I, but in that, 
I don't know what happened, but I was translated out of that place. And um, the only person that could do that is Jesus Christ. The only person that could come get you out of something like that is Jesus Christ. I was in a, it was no hope. You know, it was everything that God is, everything that Christ stands for is not in that place. There's no light. There's no hope. There's no love. There's no communion. Nothing. You're, you're desolate, separated from everything. But I was translated out of that place. I would say Jesus came and got me out of that place. The next thing I remember seeing, and now this happened to me over 15, 16, 17 years ago, but it's so vivid in my mind. I know this is what he wants me to tell you guys. Um, we flew over and you just, I was float. We flew over this city. Streets was gold. And uh, the buildings had these dome rooftops, like you see in the Middle East. Um, and they were gold and it was just a beautiful city. And um, we landed or we was translated into this other place. And um, all the while, I can tell y'all this, I knew it was Jesus. I knew it was Christ because all the while, If you know the Bible, you, you, you know the Bible talks about us being in Christ. You know, uh, us being in him. And by being in him, we can feel what he feels. And I tell you what, I've never felt the amount of love that I felt when um, I was in him like that. I still didn't see my body, but I knew I was in him. I don't know. This is other realm type stuff. So my mind can't even, I think the Bible even talks about, you can't describe that other realm. All I know is I was in him. And the love he felt. My goodness. I mean... There is no, no word to describe the amount of love he has for us. No words. Oh my goodness. I mean, love you more than anybody. So my doorbell rang, but I'm just leave it right there. Um, you feel all the mercy. You feel all the sorrow. You feel all the hurt. You know of everybody. Like it's almost like you feel that from everybody who's ever lived. One second. feel all of that and the sorrow you feel because you know that um, you feel you know that everybody's not going to believe in him everybody's not going to come to him for forgiveness everybody's not going to choose him and you feel all of that um, so the doorbell kind of threw me off. I'm sorry. So basically, we landed in this area. That's what it felt like. Like you, you just translated to another area. So um, it was like this lush grass as far as you can see. And this place, when I tell you, 
you know, this world on a beautiful day, sunny skies, how the colors pop outside. This place destroys that. The colors were so vibrant. Like <laughs> the green is green. The, I can't describe it, but the grass was as far as you can see. And I looked out and there was this huge tree in the middle of this grass, huge tree. It had to be uh, I don't know the diameter had to, it was huge like I can't even describe it as wide as a building like it was this huge beautiful tree you know that sat in it and there were kids other kids there I saw these kids. They were so happy. Just running, playing, you know, having a good time. Now, all the while, I didn't know that um, I was in another place or anything like that. I didn't remember my family. I didn't remember any of that. It was bliss. All I felt was love. All I felt was warmth and just man you see this beauty that you can't describe it, it was amazing it was amazing and then you know I turned looked and there was this huge mansion and you hear about you know Jesus says he he's going to prepare a place for us and uh, I believe somewhere in the Bible it talks about in his house is many man in his house are many mansions. I'm not a Bible scholar. I know some of it. Um I could look it up for you. Let me look it up for you. But um so you won't think I'm just making this stuff up. You can go get a Bible and look this stuff up for yourself. But um I know some of y'all probably know this off the top of your heads. <laughs> well, I'm not that, you know. Okay, it's John 14, 2. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that, that is true. I can tell you. That that is true. I can, I can tell you that I saw it. And he spoke to me. And when he, it's like you're just a part of him. So I see this mansion. The, and, you know, you're floating towards it like the door opens and this voice says to me. Uh, this is yours. If you choose to stay. So I'm thinking like. Huh? You know? And um, he said, this is all yours if you choose to stay. He gave me a choice. And I didn't know what I was choosing from. You know, choose to stay, you know. what? What is that? So I'm walking around this huge, <laughs> I mean, it's dimensions on this place. This, I mean... I still haven't seen a house that compares to anything that I saw in that in that mansion. I've never seen. I can't describe the stuff, the dimensions, the the way everything was made. <laughs> I, I, I promise you, and I'm in the architectural field. I've never seen nothing like it. Never. And never will. And. Um, until I get back up there, I believe I'm going back. Um, beautiful. So, I was thinking, you know, choose to stay. And at, at that moment, something else happened. We we translate it because I tell you, when you're in Christ right now, you're in him the bible tells us that you know to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord 
and I can look that one up too and tell y'all where it is. And I can tell you that if you're in right standings with God, you will be present with him. That's a trap. <laughs> The, I never, I didn't know these verses at 15. And when I started reading the Bible, the stuff that was, that was being said, it, it affected me. It, it touched me because I knew those words were true. Um, let me find that. And I'm sure you guys probably know where it is. Let me see. I'm sorry. Let me see. Okay. Second Corinthians five and eight says we are confident. I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. When I seen these scriptures and heard about them, I'm like, yep, that's true. Um, it's a bunch of scriptures that I could just tell you out of there that, that, that resonate with me. Um, so when I was okay, so after that vision, after God showed me that mansion, and I thought about, you know, what what am I choosing from? At that moment, when I tell you Jesus is everywhere at once, God is everywhere at once. He can, He's everywhere at once. Uh, when I thought about it, as soon as I thought about it, it was like we, I mean, zoom back down and we was in the parking deck, a hospital parking deck. And I could see down in the parking deck and I saw my family, you know, they had balloons. You see, get well soon. You see somebody holding a flower. I, well, I'm going to tell you, I saw my cousins holding flowers and balloons and stuff. So at that moment, I remember, Hey, that's my cousin. At first I had no recollection of anybody on earth, nothing like that. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm, we're just looking in. And it's like peeping in from, I don't know, it's, I can't describe it. It's other dimension type stuff. Peeped in. And I saw them walking. They went in. And they was in my room. And I saw me. And they just sat, they, they sitting by my bed praying. And Jose, come back. Get, get well, man. Just come back to us. And I'm like, what's going on? I was thinking to myself, like, what? You know, what's going on? And uh, he gave me the choice. Jesus, he said, um, if you choose to stay, you can stay. If you want to, I'm paraphrasing. It's, I kind of remember, I don't want to say it wrong, but he he gave me the option to stay. Stay with him or uh, uh, come back. And, um, you know, I believe he felt the love that I had for my family and he allowed me to come back and, um, uh, it's a story that went on outside of <clears throat> what was going on with me while I was in that state. There was some spiritual warfare going on outside uh, with my family, with my sister, some stuff that she told me after I woke up. Man, this spiritual warfare is so real. And today, right now, so many people are being blinded. And I'm going to get into it after I tell the rest of this testimony. So... I'm going to have to tie some of my sister's story in so I can wrap this up. So outside of my experience, my sister 
and family was going through experiences too, all wrapped around my my um condition. So, you know, everybody knew, you know, I was pretty decent kid, but horrible. But um, you know, people knew me from the church and everything like that. So everybody was praying for me and stuff like that. I wouldn't say I was a decent kid. I'm sorry. I take that back. I was corrupt. I, I was a nice. I wouldn't do people wrong, but I, I, I was doing bad stuff. Um, and you know, the Bible tells us <laughs> any sin, <laughs> you commit one, you know, you're not fit to go to heaven. Um, God had mercy on me. Jesus had mercy. They had that he had mercy on me. So what was going on outside? Outside of the experience, my sister was going to church, my cousins and everybody going to church, and there was a revival at the church. And she was telling me how it was a young preacher that had just started kind of ministering. Um and um she went up and asked him to pray for me. And the whole church, through the whole, out the whole revival, was praying for me. And, um, you know, when she went, it had got to the point I was on life support so long that they told my sister them that I only, they were giving me three more days to live or to be on life support because it had got, I was on so long. And my aunt was trying to take me off. So they said three days. If he doesn't wake up in three days, you know, we don't have to take him off life support. So um, the preacher, you know, after they prayed for me, I believe she said the preacher gave her some oil that he had prayed over and told her. Her to come anoint my head and feet. And um, three days later, watch what happens. So she said she was determined to make sure that she got down to me and, and did that. You know, her job was telling her she had to come in and all this stuff. And she said she was she would have lost everything to come do that for me. So she came down. She did what the preacher had told her to do. And um, three days later, I woke up out of that coma. But on that same day, that preacher that prayed for me died in a car accident. And uh, my sister was telling me how he was probably about 25, 26, 27. Young, young guy. And that, um, I don't know, I, I feel bad about that, you know. I wish I could still, you know, I, I tell everybody thank you for praying for me. I wish I could have told him thank you. Um, thank God for allowing me to come back and develop a stronger relationship with him. Do I still make mistakes in my life? Yes. Do I take God for granted now? No. At that time, you know, I was getting sick so much. You know, I started to question God. I started to, well, why are you keep, why am I keep, you know, getting sick and having to stay in the hospital and this and that? I kept asking why, why, why? I had no idea what was going on with me. Um, and I started to question, was he real? You know, am I just serving somebody that that's in my imagination or, <laughs> you know, something like that? And, um, uh, I found out that everything that I thought or everything I thought, everything, God is real. Found out that he was real through my my situation through my 
experience through my getting sick and being in a coma and all of this stuff, I found out that he was real. He answered that question for me. Um, but being human, as soon as I woke up, I remember it's so much stuff. I know I'm skipping a lot of stuff. When I woke up, <clears throat> a couple, excuse me, a couple days after I woke up, I had to learn how to walk again and, you know, eat and all this type of stuff again. And I was like, Lord, I, I started to think back to the stuff that he showed me. And I was like, Lord, I promise it on everything. Promise this on everything. I said, Lord, if if that was you, if if you showed me those things, if that was heaven and this and that, I asked I asked God for one more thing. I said, Lord, if that was you, do one thing for me, please. I said, Lord, I've never seen it snow on a beach. And that's what I thought, you know, at the time. I was like, I've never seen it snow on a beach. I was like, Lord, if I wake up in the morning and turn on this TV, you know, they have TVs in the hospital rooms and I see that it snowed on the beach. Lord, I never question you again. I went to sleep that night. It was like March something. I wish I could find a weather reports from back then so I could really show you guys this happened. Um, I woke up the next morning. I was so anxious, you know, to put it on the news. I, I clicked. As soon as I put it on the station, I heard the weather lady say, on such and such morning, you know, I'm like, it's raining. I mean, it's snowing on such and such beach. And I was like, and they showed it snowing on the beach. And I was, I was just elated. I was elated. Like, what? I said, you did that for me. You know, I, I, y'all don't understand. I mean, it was like, yeah, it's just confirmation. Like what you saw was real. What you experienced was real. And, you know, I know a lot of people still won't believe what I'm saying. A lot of people just don't want to believe. I've seen people that believed and have fallen away from believing over time. And uh, that's why I believe that time is really winding up. I wanted to put this testimony out there so it'll be out in the world. You know, I, I, I planned on writing a book and everything, but kind of got convicted of you, you can't sell a testimony. That's for testimonies are to bring people to Christ or to show they are meant to show his power. Why would you why would you sell something like that? You know, that should be something free. That everybody should be able to hear. And. Um, I'm glad I was able to tell it. There's still more. I could tell y'all about. The spiritual warfare that was going on. Outside with me. It's crazy stuff that happened to me. While I was still in a coma. Under sedation and everything. When I was in the coma, before I woke up, there was some spiritual warfare going on. Demons are real, too. My mom spoke about me. Well, it wasn't me. It was something controlling my body. She came in the hospital room. This is while I was in the coma. Night after I woke up, she said that I rose up. And something inside me whispered to her and told her, I'm already dead. And my mom ran out of there. 
And I don't know who else experienced that. I would have to ask her again. But it's some crazy stuff that goes on in this world that we don't, we can't see. The Bible tells us about spiritual warfare and how we must prepare for that. You know, it's some things that in this world that we can't see are spirits of rebellion and lust, hate, man, all kind of stuff, man. Witchcraft It's prominent today, witchcraft. People are dealing all in it. And um, it's crazy, man. But it's a time. Time is coming. The end of time is coming. I believe the rapture is really close. And I'm, I just want this to reach as many people as possible. I'm not trying to bribe you into believing God. It's not a bribe at all. I'm just telling you straight facts that I remember and I, I wanted to share. You know, people, oh, what about the other religions that say they do this and do that? I can't tell you about that. I can tell you this is what I know. This is what I've experienced, what I have experienced to be true. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. I don't know what's up with it. It might be this pollen. This Georgia pollen. But um just a bunch of stuff that was going on, man. I when I woke up, I was able to see spirits inside of people. I was able to see good and bad. I could see the stuff on them. I could see the spirits on them. I can't describe it. I could feel what other people felt. Like if they was feeling pain, I would feel their pain. I, I can't understand. I can't explain that. I remember, I remember one time. The Holy Ghost started speaking to me after all this happened. I remember telling me. The, uh, asked my cousin, did her knee hurt? And sure enough, her knee was hurting and I prayed and everything for her knee. And I, I don't know. I, I forgot what happened, but that was that tripped me out. Um, even recently, I don't know if I know God has used me, you know, to do healing type stuff before. Uh, I remember my daughter, she had a really high fever. I don't know if it was 104, 106. It was really high and it just was not breaking. And, um, I was laying down in my bed. I'm praying and like, Lord, you know, you hate to see your kids sick and everything like that and it had got so bad that she was shaking you know and you know that's almost that's pretty bad like seizure type shaking and when I went in there you know uh, I was praying and God led me said go in there and touch your daughter pray you know touch her when I tell you I went in the room and as I she was shaking when I touched when I was touched when I first went there and she was, you know, still hot and everything, touched my daughter, started praying. You know, I could feel the shaking in my hand from her shaking. While I was praying, the shaking stopped. The fever broke instantly. I mean, power, not mine. I just was used to do it. So it's so many things I could tell y'all how God has been walking me through my life. <clears throat> how Jesus has kept me, you know, through my whole life. So many, so many stories I could tell y'all, but I wanted to tell y'all the main one about me. Having an asthma attack, found out with the asthma attack, I had collapsed lungs of the flu and pneumonia at the same time. They said my heart, my lungs were the consistency of wood. But 
But look at me. I'm breathing. I'm here. I got a story to tell y'all about it. I mean, a real story to tell. Truth, not just, there's no, no science fiction, no, none of that. This is real facts that I'm telling you guys. Um, and I hope that somebody takes this. I hope somebody comes back to God, come back to, comes back to the word, come back, come, comes back to Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Christ, get to know him for yourself. I don't recommend somebody always tells you, you know, tell you to go find a local church and all this. If you look at the Bible, like, yeah, the church is good. But you got to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. One-on-one. -on -one. It's good to go to church, but make sure you sit, you ask God for forgiveness for you. You ask and try to figure out what will it take to be saved. <clears throat> if you're not saved, I encourage you. To get saved. The way to be saved. Is, is pretty simple. Um, the Bible tells us that we. First. First we must hear the word. Um, and after you hear it. You got to believe. That what, whatever somebody. What that word is telling you. Is true about Jesus Christ. About him. Being crucified. You know, he came. He died for our sins. You know, three days he rose again. Defeated death. Um, he rose with all power. And he's still alive. He's everywhere right now. Um, his spirit is here on earth. His body is in heaven. It's it's a connection that, like like I said, we don't understand it all right now. <clears throat> but he sent the Holy Ghost, you know, to comfort us while we're here, to be to keep in contact, to have that one on one from him. We can get to God, but we have to be in him. Um, I would say uh, if you have any questions or you know wanting to get into what it takes you know deeply I, I don't know if I have enough time on this this video but inbox me you know comment on my uh, video and we could talk more I, I know a lot more I just I'm not some great speaker. I'm not a preacher, but I do know scripture enough to tell you what, what it takes to be saved, what it is. Um, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. You know, um, you know, some people point you to Acts 238 and you know, all of that stuff is it's good to be baptized. But Believing, not only believing, but really putting your trust and your faith in him. You know, the Bible tells us that the devils believe, you know, that demons believe in God, but they're not putting their trust and their faith in him like we got to do. And that's serious. You know, you hear people say they believe. Yeah, you can believe. But when you truly put your faith and your trust in him, you'll look at this Bible and it'll wake up. To me, this this Bible is alive to me. It is alive. Um, it's a straight letter from God and it's alive. It's not just a book to me. These are life. These words are life to me and uh, you know I don't care if people 
laugh or ridicule that. He has become real in my life. And I'm telling you guys that he's real. And you can know him just like I do. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm going to learn and be growing until the day that I, I leave here. Um, nobody's perfect. I want you guys to know that. Um, but we are supposed to work towards perfection. The Bible tells us to work towards it. Repent daily. Try to get your, try to get, get on the straight and narrow. You know, you see a lot of people going this way. Sometimes it's hard to go against that stream. But um, I promise you, you can do it. Yeah, you might stumble and hit some rocks, but get back up. Keep going that narrow road. Um, thank y'all for listening. If you listen to the whole thing, man, come rate. I mean, comment. Let me know you listen to the whole um, video. You know, that'll really touch my spirit. You know, that somebody would take time to listen to this testimony. Uh, I love you guys. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, my final um, words would be get to know who Jesus Christ is in this, this Bible. If you have questions about any of that, comment, inbox me, and we can talk. Um, well, again, I love you. And uh, hope to hear from somebody. Peace.